Hi friends, I'm Tammy Kay, and today I'm teaching you how to paint these white cosmos using negative space painting. If you don't know what that is, by the end of this video, you will totally wanna to do it over and over. One of the easiest ways to paint white flowers. Let's get into it. Okay, so we're starting off with a light sketch here on my Academy watercolor paper, and I'm just going to kind of map out where I want things to go. So I wanna save this sketch so you guys can do this with me instead of just starting with a sketch already down. All right, so we have our center and we're gonna do eight petals. So our first petal here, I'm showing you, it's going to be skinnier as it attaches to the center. And then it gets a little bit wider uh, towards the middle. And then that one was a little bit skinnier. This one is kind of tucked behind the first one. And let's do a third one here. We're gonna make these a little wonky. So just think thin, thicker, and then it can round on the edge, on the outside edge, or it could be a little pointy, whatever you want. Allow your pencil just to be a little wonky moving so you get some waves in there. All right, let's go where number five here, and it's a smaller petal, and then a little smaller one tucked underneath. So it's sort of tilted in a way that uh, we're able to see all those petals on the back there. And then in the front, they appear to be shorter because it's tilted a little bit towards us. All right, so this guy's gonna be a little funky. He's kind of sticking out. I think I'm going to, and I'm just, hey, real time here, uh, erase a little bit and shorten him up because he's just too long. Now he is a little bit funky, he's sticking out, but it's gonna add a little bit of, I think, whimsical um, to this painting. So feel free to sketch and then erase and then sketch again until you like what you see. Sometimes we just have to um, lengthen things. Sometimes we have to shorten them or make them thicker or thinner until we like um, the placement. All right, so let's go ahead and do one here. And this one will be kind of a sort of a side facing one, not completely because we'll be able to see the center. So the center is going to be a half circle. And then we're going to start with basically uh, four petals here on the top. So we'll start with one right there uh, and then a second one here to the right. So again, just remember you're doing ovals and it's thinner, a little bit thinner where it's connected to the center and it gets wider as you go out. And the shape of these is gonna be a little bit different just because it is that almost side facing flower. So we have this one small one here on the left and then also one here on the right. And then we'll do another one here in the front. It's just long and not wide at all. And as you can see, it let's do a little another little stem area here and just bring it all the way down. Of course, we have that connector point and then we'll add our stem here. We want it to just come right underneath where that center is so it looks like it's placed correctly. I love sketching. We're going to do a side facing um, flower now right here and let's go ahead and add that connecting point that's in the middle of the flower so the base of the flower before the stem connects to it we're gonna do four petals here I'm moving pretty quickly we're just kind of repeating that oval type shape we did for the other petals and bringing that stem down I won't bring it all the way down to uh, the bottom just letting it kind of hang out there. Let's add some of those leaves. So they are just these thin wonky lines. We're just moving them if back and forth. If you hold your pencil really loosely, you're gonna get this down pat. It'll be very easy. So we're just gonna fill that in a little bit more, some lines going up, kind of curving out to the left, to the right, and connecting. Um, just like poppies, Cosmos have these really interesting leaves. And today I'm using my Paulina Bright brushes. The link is in the description of this video. She was so kind to send me a set of five. If you're interested in looking up her website, you can see that in the description. And we're gonna go ahead and erase some of these lines just a tad. I'm using a kneaded eraser today. It's kind of like a piece of clay in a way. It doesn't leave all those little annoying bits that an eraser, a regular eraser does. And we're just gonna go over this, making sure it's lighter so that we don't have so much of the pencil showing through our watercolor sketch. Not that a pencil mark bothers me in the least, but 
just to just to be safe and for demonstration. So today we are going to paint some white flowers and the way we're doing that is through the concept of negative painting. So I am literally taking this light blue paint. I think I want to mix up a little bit more. I'm probably going to use a ton on this 9 by 12 paper. And I am just going to paint around these petals. And we are going to be very careful now. This is going to be the most tedious thing you do in this entire painting. But believe me, it does take some patience, but it is worth it. You're going to have some white flowers so quickly. And as I'm painting this, I'm trying to think if I should paint around the stems. And I think I will at this point because I just want to make sure that I have um, the space to be able to paint in my green and not have it a little muddied with the blue underneath or whatever could happen. So, all right, so we're just gonna paint around every petal, every little crevice here. And I will be from time to time dipping into my water so that I can use that to spread out the blue paint that I've already put down. And this is of course going to give me some interesting texture in my painting. It's going to push some of the paint around. When you add a bunch of water to already wet paint, it pushes the paint that's already done and makes these really cool blooms or cauliflower texture and shapes, as I like to call them, as we call them, in the watercolor world. And so that can be really pretty for a background. So I'm just moving pretty quickly around the spaces where I don't have to be too careful, where there aren't any petal shapes. And this is a round brush. Uh, it's wonderful because it has a really nice point to it. And so I can really get into those cracks and crevices in between those petals and feel like it's doing a good job. Now, you don't need to worry too much about this underpainting, which is what this is, that first layer of color or this basic wash. And I'm curious how you're feeling at this point, if you're enjoying this experience, if you are feeling anxiety in any way, take a step away from this painting, come back when you feel more relaxed, remind yourself this is a fun experience we are learning together, and there's nothing to be worried about or stressed about because this is an experience that it will be relaxing and it's about self-care for you. You know what? I'm getting kind of tired about painting um, around all these edges. Let's just fill it in. I, I was considering it and I think it's just going to be a lot easier. The biggest piece that we're worried about here would be just the white flowers and maintaining the white of the page. So, you know, in all kinds of mediums, you have the ability to use white paint in a way that you can add your white later on, and it works really, really well. But with watercolor, we do have white watercolor. That is true, but it is so transparent that and also because of watercolor, you have to work from light to dark because once you go dark, you cannot lighten up the paint by adding lighter layers. It will not show through. And so we cannot use white watercolor uh, to make our watercolor flowers. And so what we like to do is reserve the white. And that's what we're doing of this paper. It's really nice when you're doing an ocean scene, for example, and you have that really nice bubbly, frothy uh, water at the shoreline. And so you can leave that white there. You can take a different medium, for example, gouache, which is kind of a mixture. It's kind of in between watercolor and um, acrylic. And if you get a gouache paint that is water soluble, you can add water to it and it acts like a watercolor. So it's really nice. If you put it on really thick, you can put white over. But it's a little messy. Sometimes it easily comes off. If the water touches it again, it doesn't dry really nicely um, as well, I would say, as watercolor. And it comes right up if you scrub over it with your brush. So this is going to be, I'm thinking, one of your favorite ways to make flowers, especially white flowers. Um, one of the ways I've made white flowers in the past was I simply just took a very light blue or very light gray and painted in my flowers, but that's really not white. So this is gonna give you that look, that, and I'm so excited to share this with you today. Let me know in the comments how you're doing. If you have used any negative painting, have you had that experience before, let me know what you've painted or what are your favorite ways to reserve the white paper. You can also use something called, well, it's like a rubber cement, but it's called masking fluid, and that can be painted over the space where you don't want paint to go. And so when it dries, it's this nice little covering um, that you rub off later and you reserve the white of the paper. But I prefer this method. It's just, it takes a while for the masking fluid. It gets kind of messy. 
All right, I'm just going to add a little bit more dark blue here and there just to touch up um, the background of this painting. It is going to give me more texture and blooms, and I'm super into that, as you heard me say. Uh, if you are enjoying this video, please give it a like and then subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on any tutorials in the future. We have a ton of fun over here. As a therapist, I also like to talk about mental health, and so if you like that kind of thing, self-care and all the things, definitely uh, check out some of my other videos. And also I teach watercolor and Patreon, so the link is in the description. If you're interested in more exclusive tutorials, live stream access with me, um, art prints, and so much more. All right, so now we're gonna start the fun part. This always feels like a chore, having to sketch all the things, although it's really good for your brain, and then having to do that, that background wash, but here we go. Now we're gonna start with our white flowers. Of course, we're going to start with the yellow of the middles too. So I've got a nice cadmium yellow. It's kind of that um, orangey yellow. And we'll add that for our centers, just for our two flowers. And now I'm going to mix up a nice gray color. And that is what we're going to use for the accents to our flowers. So what I always use, since I don't have it on my palette, is I like to take a dark blue and mix it up with a brown color and adding water until I get a really light consistency. I don't want this too dark. I want it to be really transparent. Um, we're adding gray accents, people, to our white flowers, so we don't wanna go crazy. All right, so that is a pretty dark line here, but I'm taking my brush, I rinsed it and dabbed it on a towel, and look at how I'm starting to create some shadow lines. I'm really just going over and outlining the petals. Look at how simple this is. Anyone can do this, um, and it's really fun. So I'm just outlining the petals, taking a clean, damp brush, and I'm blending it in. I, I work fast, people. I hope that it's not too fast for you. Um, let me know in the comments below if you need me to slow down in my videos. Um, but you can also always pause the video if you need a little bit more time. I know that when I've done tutorials from other people, sometimes I've paused the video and that's okay. It's important to go at your own speed. So I'm going really lightly here. And then because I'm blending out that color, I'm not going to get a hard edge of gray and we can always darken it up later too. I'm going to do some little marks on the petals and now I'm going to do my lines. So really light gray. Cosmos have these really beautiful veins and that they're known for. So I'm just working quickly and I'm going to follow the contours of the petal. So if the petal on the outside is curving, the lines on the inside in the middle might be a little bit straight, but as they start to curve, as they start to go towards the outside of that petal and there is a contour or there is a curve, then I will curve the line to emulate that. For example, this one curving out and then straight and then curving back out the other way. And I like to do a few little brush strokes on the edges of the petals sometimes as well, just to give a little bit, um, a little bit of contrast, a little bit of shadow maybe, and interest in these, in these, um, in these uh, flowers. That's the word. That's the word I couldn't find. So very, very light. We might go back and darken some of this up a little bit more later on. If you need to rotate your paper, by the way, which I highly recommend because it's hard to do these lines that start of start, sort of start to curve and contour to the shape of the petal. It's hard to do that um, from every angle. Don't let anyone tell you that you cannot angle your paper. I do not agree with that. I think it is a wonderful skill to be able to learn to do all the curves and, and all the things, all the brush strokes and everything through uh, with your paper being at one angle I think that's a really great learning process as of course I'm taking a little more darker gray and now adding in over the top some darker brush strokes but that doesn't mean that you have to do it every time or at all so you need to paint for yourself you need to paint how you feel most comfortable I'm always saying that the rules for watercolor and painting in general are there they're there for us to learn and understand what those rules are, but that doesn't mean we have to follow them. So just be gentle to yourself and remind yourself to paint in the way that makes you happy and comfortable. Okay, so we have that first big bloom there looking pretty fine. And now we're going to start with this next one. The same process, just, and I have a very pointy brush. It's a number six round, has a nice point. I'm using very light pressure to add 
a very, very light watery paint to all of these petals. And I'm starting off really light like I did with a bigger bloom. And we can, of course, go in and darken up later. But I just like to add in the colors and then just as it dries, one shade dry, uh, sorry, one shade lighter, uh, I like to go reevaluate and see how I feel uh, things are looking at what needs to be changed. So on my palette there, I just dipped into the right side has a bit more saturated green. And so we're just going back over some of those parts, darkening up uh, the, the lines where the petals meet each other and even the lines going out from the center to the outside of the petal as well. So I'm curious what you guys think about your painting so far, if you're painting with me. Um, what are you liking about what you're seeing? Are you enjoying it? Do you feel a little bit anxious about how things are coming out? Uh, if it's hard to find something that you love, I would encourage you, like I always say, to think of uh, one or two things, at least the colors or the shapes or your composition or your mindset is also something I just always looking for the good is going to help encourage you in your painting journey. Okay. All right. So now dipping into that gray for a third time, a third flower. And I wanted to hit up all, maybe not all, but three of the main flower perspectives here in this composition, which we did today, that pretty much forward facing flower um, that side facing and then the upward facing, maybe I could call it that so that we have all those together and we could keep everything forward facing, for example, but it might not be as interesting as if we have all the, the flowers kind of changing the directions from here, here and there. All right. Just a little bit more gray. Looks, looks pretty good. Um, I'm liking how things are coming together and now it's time for our green. I have a lovely sap green color on my palette. I'm really trying to soak up that paint, grabbing that paint. I probably need to spray my palette down again. That's probably what's happening because it's had a lot of time to dry out since we've been painting for about 17 minutes, <laughs> maybe 16 minutes. I don't know. So I'm adding some of this bright lemon yellow green to my sap green to lighten it up. The lemon yellow is going to give you a brighter green than that orangey cadmium green. All right. So we're just going to follow the sketch that we made and look, I'm doing tiny little sketch lines. I want that look. I want it to look loose. And if we just take um, make a line from the top to the bottom without stopping, it might look a bit, uh, I don't know, a bit stiff, I guess, literally. And I want it to look more loose and just kind of playful. So then if you do those little sketch lines, just, you know, like half an inch at a time as you're moving your paint around and your brush, um, then you'll get that look that, you know, I have here. All right, so we're adding in green, just following the sketch lines that we did. Again, little short brush strokes, really quick movements, holding your brush really loosely as well so that we can make these really cool spiky leaves. I don't know if we can call them leaves. If you know, let me know in the comments. Um, I'm not quite sure I always call them leaves because well, they're in the same position that leaves would be in. So I don't know what else I would call it. I guess it's a quick Google search that I could do. Uh, all right, so we're almost done with that. Just adding these in quite loosely. And I'm really enjoying this. I think I'm going to do some more negative painting videos in the future because, uh, do especially with the white flowers, uh, this is just really making my day. I'm having a lot of fun with this. I'm seeing that I need to add some lines here to our um, upward facing flower. And that's great. And so if you're observing that things are looking way too light, you can always go ahead and change things up, make it a little darker. Once it's dry, you can tell. Okay, so now we're going to mix up some dark brown paint. And I'm sorry it's off screen there, but I'm just trying to loosen up and activate the paint with enough water so that I can get enough on my brush to be able to do what I need to do. We're just gonna do some really tiny, brush strokes encircling the center of this flower and guys this is really going to okay i didn't get any paint on my brush let's try that again sometimes that happens a little more pigment a little bit more water there we go so this is going to really make your flower come alive it's going to make it look a lot more realistic having these tiny little details in the center makes things come alive 
So just adding in those little brush strokes, it's the smallest little detail, but it really makes a big difference. And now for this second flower, remember that we're just seeing the top and sides of it, and the other part is covered by that really small looking petal. So this flower composition is almost done as I'm cleaning off my brush here just to make sure that I don't leave it dirty. That's never good for your brushes. All right, we're gonna take some of that orangey yellow, a little bit of orange as well, and we're just going to stipple in the center of the flower, leaving some of that other original yellow space showing through as well. And then we want to darken up our greens also. And I really love how the background has dried here with the blue, just in case you wanted to take another look. Look at all the little blooms and texture we have. That's just really fun for the eye to see that. Okay, so we are going to kind of quickly paint over, not completely though, but paint over some of the parts of that stem. I'm just going really fast because I do want the original paint to show through or else what's the point? If you didn't want the light to be there as well, the light color, then you wouldn't have painted um, it light in the first place. All right, I think I need a little bit more dark here just on this edge just to differentiate between things. A little bit of a shadow there, blend it out. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoy um, your painting and how it's come out. And I did forget to mention at the beginning that you could tape your paper um, and it just gives us a really nice clean border when we're doing a background wash. And just to correct myself as well, I was using the Legion Stonehenge paper, not the Academy paper today. Anyway, I'm usually using Academy when I can, but this is the perfect size today. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video.